What's up YouTube? Have you ever wanted to know more about a Finny photo on the iPad? Well that is what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back. It has been a minute, at least since you've seen my face, and I do apologize for not being present in the last few videos, but I've just been having a lot going on. I wasn't able to pull the camera out, but I still wanted to produce some tutorials for you guys and finish up the Affinity Designer tutorials with the last studios and the tools. And now it's time for us to go ahead and move into Affinity Photo on the iPad. And I know a lot of people have been wanting this and it is going to take a while to get through because there is a lot going on here. But let me just kind of lay it out for you. In this video, we're going to get started with Affinity Photo on the iPad tutorials. And we will probably be doing them for quite a while because there's a lot going on, as I said. In this video, we're going to start out by looking at the interface. We're going to learn what the different types of buttons are and where they're located on the screen so we can kind of be oriented before we jump in and we start going systematically through each of the tools. We'll be starting with the tools and then when we finish the tools, we will go on to the studios. Now, a lot of the studios are very, very similar to things that you would find in Affinity Designer. So if you have questions about some of those studios, you can always go check out my Affinity Designer Studio tutorials and they will tell you a lot of the same things that you will learn when we get to the studios in Affinity Photo. The other thing to note is that we're going to look at the personas today. I'm going to show you how to switch personas and each persona will change the tools that you have access to. So we're going to be starting in the standard photo persona and going through those tools in the next videos. Now it doesn't look like there's a ton of tools at first when you look at it. It might look like Affinity Designer has more tools in its designer persona, but when you actually get into Affinity Photo, you'll find that there are a lot of tools nested underneath each other by category. So it may take us a while to get through the tools and I will try and mix in some other tutorials and other videos as we go along and we'll see how quickly we're able to get through these. But let's go ahead and let's start learning about the interface of Affinity Photo on the iPad. All right, here we are in Affinity Photo on the iPad, and the first thing that you'll see is the home screen, and this is going to show you all of your different files, where those are at, so you can see some of these from previous tutorials. You might recognize some of them in my files here, and then you have the option along the top to do things like create a new file by pressing the plus and you can choose what type of document you want it to be. So that's how you could create a new file. If we back out again, you'll see that there's this little help icon. If you tap that, it's just going to take you into Affinity's help menu so you can kind of figure out where everything is. And then if you tap the gear icon, you are going to see all of the different preferences that you can go through. Now, I have not made a video about the preferences and that really would need to be a video unto itself, but I don't know if that's something that really interests people. I don't see people needing to go into their preferences a lot in the Affinity programs because they're pretty well set up from the get-go. But if you're interested in a preferences video, go ahead and drop that in the comments. Let me know what kind of things you're wondering about, what kind of things would be useful to you, and I might be able to do that in the future. Go ahead and hit done here. And the last icon up there is actually your account icon. So when you pop that up, you're going to be able to see all of your account and if you've registered your products with your online account you will have some things that you are able to download from the affinity store because they gave some for free when you set up your account and also you can buy things from the store which will then be here okay let's go ahead and hit close of course most of the interface is actually going to be in the working area of affinity photo so i'm going to go ahead and just open up this meme document so that we can see where all of the different parts are let's talk about the different sections that are here so you can see at the top you have kind of your top menu that's going to have your personas in it, which we'll get to in a second. And then along the left hand side, you're going to have your toolbar. This is really common in creative programs to have the toolbar along the left hand side. So if you're coming from Photoshop or something like that, this should be familiar to you. And many of the tools are very similar. And then on the right hand side over here, we actually have the studios. And these are things where you can handle the details of your work, things like the layers studio. So you can see all of the different layers that I have in this project, the color studio. And many of these, like I said in the intro, are very similar to the studios in Affinity Designer. So if you have any questions about them, a lot of those questions can probably be answered by the Affinity Designer Studios tutorials. But you're going to need to use your studios a lot. The other thing to note here right at the beginning is this little question mark in the bottom right hand corner. That's going to be super useful if you get confused because if you tap that, you'll be able to see what everything is. So this is a great way for you to kind of orient yourself. If you're looking for something in particular, you can find it just by holding down on that question mark super useful. And then in the middle of the screen, you will go to have your document. So we can zoom in and out with pinch gestures here, and that will help us to orient and navigate. And of course we can move it around as well. But the other area of the screen is kind of this bottom area, which is empty currently. But if we have certain tools open, we'll get menus for it. 
So you have just opened up the fill tool and you'll see we get the contextual menu for the fill tool down there and that's where we can select a lot of different options for it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the view tool for now. So those are all of the different like sections of the screen. The last thing to note on that is that in the top right you have a little double headed arrow box icon and if you tap that that will actually hide the interface so if you want to get kind of the interface out of the way you can do that and then just tapping that will bring it back again okay so we're going to get into the tools and studios in separate videos but let's talk a little bit about what's going on at the top of the screen obviously you have the back arrow here which will let you get back out into your document selection screen and then you have a bunch of buttons the first two buttons there one is the document menu and one's the commands menu so if we open up the document menu this is going to have a lot of the things that you might expect to see where you have things like resizing your canvas, saving a copy of this document, turning on and off your snapping, setting up your grids. There's a lot of different options there within the document menu that you can do. And chances are, if you need to change something about the document, you're going to find it there. Now, we also have the command menu. So this is sometimes called the edit menu as well. It's similar to like a right click menu if you're working in a desktop program. And so a lot of your important options are going to be here. So you can see you've got things like duplicate. You can check out your different pasteboard commands here. You've got a bunch of different options there. If you want to do some kind of special pasting, you can place different types of files from different places here. There's just a lot of different options here. If you feel like you're missing something, I would go up and check this menu because it's probably going to be there. For example, like the geometry merge options, those are found here under the command menu. But the next set of icons here, these are the personas. So if I hold down on the question mark, you can see the different persona options there, right? So there's the photo persona. That's basically your standard. That's the one we're going to be working in first, looking through all of the tools in there. That is where you will do probably 60 to 70% of your work. The next one is selections. So in order to kind of break out the tools and make things simpler, all of the selection tools are actually in the selection menu. So if you came from Photoshop and you were like, where are the selection tools? Why are there no selections here? Well, they're all contained within this separate persona just to kind of make things easier here. And we'll get to these eventually, although it is going to take a while because we have a lot of tools to get through. Then the next one that we have here is the liquify persona. So this is where all of your options for pucker and bloat and that kind of thing are going to be. So if you want to work in kind of the liquefying reshaping realm, those are going to all be found under here. Next, you're going to have the develop module. And if I tap on that, you can see that I'm not actually able to enter the develop module with this particular picture because there's too much going on to it. But I've actually taught an entire course on the develop module. It's really meant for working with raw photos. So you can go ahead and check out that course linked in the description below. And we probably won't get too much into the tools that are associated with that just because they really are more aimed at the raw photo editor. The next one you can see here is the tone mapping. That one I also can't use with this particular photo, but it's more for advanced options and working with the tone map of your image. And that's another one that we won't be getting much into in this series, unless that's something that people start expressing a lot of interest as we're getting to the end of the series. And lastly, we have one called the export persona and the export persona is where you're going to go if you want to export things in a specific way you can of course export the document from the document menu come here to document and export to export the whole thing but this is where you're going to actually be able to create slices so you can see that it's made a slice for me there and I did a video where we looked at how to do this to slice an image into multiple images so that you could use it for Instagram so go ahead and check out that tutorial if this export persona interests you. We've talked a lot about that in that tutorial. And so those are all of the different personas there. Again, you'll use some of them more than others. You will probably use the photo persona more than anything else because that's where the main work happens. So those are all of the different areas and the personas in Affinity Photo on the iPad. Okay, I hope you enjoyed learning more about the interface of Affinity Photo on the iPad. Now remember, I have several courses that go into Affinity Photo on the iPad, which are linked in the description below. You can go ahead and check those out if you want to learn more how to actually apply to a specific type of project the tools and the studios that are here in Affinity Photo on the iPad. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments. I love to hear from you. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.